Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Terry Fletcher. It is week 15, and this is the WTF What the Football podcast. So let's start with what's making headlines. How about the COVID-19 virus that is hitting every single team. So what's interesting is there has been some controversy because when the COVID first hit last year, the league was clear. They're saying, wait a minute, if because a lot of people are saying, I don't want to be vaccinated or I do, and we're not making a position either way, that's, that's your personal choice. But what we're saying is there were rules set in place that were agreed on between the NFL and the NFLPA, but the NFLPA pushed back because what happened is that the Browns and um, the Seahawks and a couple other teams, they were basically losing 30 players a team to COVID. And what happened at the beginning is they said, in the beginning of the season, is they said that games would be canceled. And if there was a outbreak that left the team without you know, the ability to play, Well, I guess what happened, and this is just from what was the gist from the NFLPA president, J.C. Treader, who happens to also be the center for the Browns. I'm going to leave that there and let you decide what to do with that, if that's a conflict of interest or not. But there were six teams uh, in jeopardy of having their Week 15 game canceled due to the spike. Now, the reason that they decided to cancel games at the beginning or said, look, it's because the NFL has very strict protocols and encouragement to get vaccinated. Well, they said their position was that it didn't matter at all what happened, but it was really more of a, um, a, an unvaccinated punishment, if you will. Well, so what happened with the union, which is the NFLPA, they basically said if those games were canceled, then 18% of our player population was at risk of not getting paid. Remember, even the team that is put at risk by whether you're vaxxed or not, the team that didn't have a problem also doesn't get paid because the game's not played. And so that was their position. Yeah, the Raiders were not happy because they were the ones supposed to play the Browns and they were fine, but now they're popping up with uh, certain players. But with the new variant, many players and coaches who've tested positive and with the protocols can't play or can't participate, they actually are vaccinated players So and and, uh, staff and coaches. So they had to make an adjustment And that was the WTF for the moment where they've had to move games. Now, am I a little uh, snippy about it, a little salty? I am only because of what they did to the Steelers uh, last year uh, when it came to the Thanksgiving game. And they had an unvaxxed player with the Ravens. We didn't get our Thanksgiving game. They moved it a couple of times. And so you prepare and then you don't play. You prepare and then you don't play. And we had one of the earliest um, buys ever. So it was just, they even switched our buy and then gave other teams an advantage by making their buy a little later and more um, player, I, I guess, favorable or team favorable. So that's not helpful. And we were just hoping that doesn't happen to the Steelers. So anyway, I just know a lot of teams were not happy because of what they were told at the beginning and then what actually happened with Um, the adjustment. Now we're seeing more and more teams that are starting to get hit as the holidays continue. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if they're going to move any more games. As of this recording for WTF, they're not moving the Steelers Chiefs game. And I know that the Chiefs are absolutely right now decimated with uh, 12 players that have hit and really big, big players, big named. So between their quarterback and their tight end and Tyreek Hill, their their star wide receiver, et cetera. Now, do the Steelers have any players? Yes, we do. So we do have a couple of players in the practice squad. We've got Devin Bush. Um, so we do have a couple of players that, that are definitely on a list as well. We have five. So we'll see what happens. Stay tuned to that. But talk about a WTF. All I can say is, oh, my gosh, people, this has just been a nightmare for everybody. Now, let's take a look at the games from the week 15 around the league and see where we're at. So one of the things that actually is kind of a huge WTF moment is all these movings of games that we end up having games on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 
Wednesday was a break and I was actually driving back from Napa today. And then <laughs> Thursday, um, Saturday, Sunday. So in 10 days, we're having a ton of games. So uh, talk about you know, gifting everybody some, some time this season, but it's really a wild weekend and it's not just, uh, you know, Sunday fun day anymore. And, and then Monday night you look forward to. So let's take a look at some of the WTF and I like to call them winners and losers around the league of who really, you know, benefited or what's going on there. So Indianapolis beat New England. And that was after everybody was saying New England and Tom Brady are going to meet in the Super Bowl. Um, well, 27, 17 Indianapolis over New England, that was a Saturday night game. It was a pretty decent game. All I can say is that the defense was stifling on the Colts side. Uh, Ladarius Leonard and company really got in the Patriots face. And I mean, Mac Jones early, but you know what? Jonathan Taylor, he just is the story. He is a legit candidate, I think for the MVP. So he had, um, over a hundred yards rushing again, and he is, is truly just ridiculous. So that was a WTF for them. I hate talking about the Green Bay Packers who are now 11 and three, but you know that everybody wants Aaron Rodgers to be MVP, but I don't know if his early season, you know, kind of hate got that he got is going to happen, but they played Baltimore and remember it was Tyler Huntley. Um, that played and the defense couldn't stop Tyler Huntley as quarterback because Lamar Jackson was out due to actually an ankle sprain, not from COVID and Mark Andrews, their tight end on um, the Rager, the Ravens, they were, you know, they definitely had a show there and it was a last minute, interesting decision by the coach um, for the, to try to, you know, for the win. So it was a 31 30 green Bay win. And so that tells you that the defense definitely didn't show up on either team, but Rogers threw, you know, three more touchdowns with no picks. Um, you know, it, it, the, the biggest thing is trying to go for two when you could have, um, for the win, instead of uh, tying it up with that extra point on the Harbaugh side. I mean, you need the game, right? I mean, to think that you're, I think the second time that he's done this, everybody was like, what are you thinking? And then of course, other people are like, Oh no, it's not. What are you thinking? He's a great coach. Oh, come on. If you're in the AFC North, you take the points, you take the points. So I'm just not sure what that was, but thank you. We appreciate that Harbaugh. You're definitely, um, must've had the Steelers in your fantasy lineup. So we appreciate that. Now the Houston Texans, you know, I don't know what to think about that team. The way that they, you know, chipped away and gave away all their players, I thought they might be an 0-17 uh, team. But they definitely came back and they won it at Jacksonville. Um, their play, they played their uh, Trevor Lawrence. They won 30 to 16, and you know, Brandon Cooks actually came out um, and did, had a really good game. So we'll see what happens with Houston, but you know they're going to be high on the draft list. The Bengals. Okay, so. 15 to 10 went over Denver. Well, you know, they had two straight losses. So I know that coach was like, God, I just need a win, but they really, they, they really don't, they have a, uh, you know, an eight and six record. It wasn't Joe Burrow's best game. Um, but they, they really got a touchdown late in the third quarter. The only thing I liked about that game is Tyler Boyd is on my fantasy and he got a 56 yard scoring touchdown to give them the lead that they kept but we needed them to lose. So thanks a lot for Denver not helping us out there. But it definitely is making things closer and closer and closer when we talk about what the football in the AFC North. It is ridiculous. Now here's something that you'll find kind of funny if those of you that either don't get the, the Pittsburgh Steelers games in your area, you don't have direct TV or you don't have a streaming site that gets it, or you don't manipulate your rabbit ears to get it. And you have to listen on the radio. Well, like I mentioned, I just got back from uh, Napa in California, because that's where I'm at. Um, and we went up for a couple of days and uh, we listened to it on the radio. And we were in the car and remember this is three hours and I'm seven hours away from Napa, by the way. So this was a, you know, the definitely an early morning. We left at five o'clock in the morning. I know you guys think we're weird, but we were just there three days and it's a long drive. You do the book on tape, you talk to people in the car for an hour and then they go to sleep and you're just listening to the radio or to a book on tape. Like I said, well, try listening to the Steelers on the radio with those guys talk about announcers on steroids. 
It was crazy to hear. And it was the Steelers channel, which was awesome because we have um, Sirius XM. But the Pittsburgh's 19 to 13 win, we pull up to our hotel one minute after that we hear on the radio what Joe Hayden did and that they, when they looked upstairs, he wasn't even close to that first down uh, marker. Joe Hayden not only stopped that player from getting that tackle from getting that uh, first down, but he held his arm so that he couldn't even move the ball out of his arm. So you know what? That was a gutty, a gritty, and a tough win um, over the um, over the de- the Tennessee defense. So and remember, Mike Vrabel was a Steeler at one time. So and he was also a Patriot. So he definitely wanted that game. Um, T.J. Watt, he had. Definitely a great game. He continued his defensive player of the year push with 1.5 sacks. And now he has 17.5. Boy, what the football, TJ. Awesome. But to get Joe Hayden back that week, this week, and just really, I don't know. I'm pretty excited about it. So this is going to be fun. We're now 7-6-1. and one. We moved up because of the losses by the Browns and how everything played out and by the Baltimore Ravens. So we're now third. So it's it's really close right now. Uh, in the AFC North. And then San Francisco, of course, won. But let's take a look at who lost. And, you know, it's interesting because the teams that are losing are the teams that have good records. So, I mean, my daughter now lives in Phoenix area and with her fiance and they're, they're planning a wedding here. And the one thing that she went from, she is still a Steelers fan. We make sure of it, but she's now becoming a, a slow Arizona Cardinals fan. She thinks when we're not looking, and she's like, and so they were kind of watching their game on their phones in the back while we were listening to the Steelers and a blowout loss to Detroit to Detroit. I mean, what the heck? I know that DeAndre Hopkins, you know, had a, and has an injury and they're not going to, he's not going to be back for the season, but what the heck? It was awful. It was absolutely awful. But you know what? Tip your hat to Detroit. I mean, they're like, Hey, we beat a 10 and 10 and three team at the time. Now they're 10 and four. And so good for them. I mean, it's it's just crazy and shocking loss for uh, Arizona. Now, I'm going to go back to the Ravens game as far as the loss, only because I, I just don't understand it. When Harbaugh elects to go for two instead of kicking the extra point, likely sending the game into overtime, he's left with a loss. I don't get it. I mean, Baltimore had all the momentum. They had the home crowd. They had Justin. I mean, send t- Justin Tucker out there. You know, tie the game. What are you doing? And I'm just talking football now. I'm not saying because I wanted Baltimore uh, to win. But this was the same thing that cost the Chargers the game on Thursday night. This trend is just wrong. It's not just odd. It's wrong. And I don't understand what people are doing out there, what these coaches are doing. They're like, oh, I'm taking chances. Are you trying to lose games? You go for the points. What the heck, people? What the football, I should be saying. It's just crazy. And I just, I don't understand it. It makes absolutely no sense to me. And who else lost? Now, this one was very shocking. Tom Brady lost. Everybody wants to say Tampa Bay lost. No, Tom Brady lost. And I was very surprised because they lost to the Saints, which is always a tough game for them. But they got shut out. And so that shut out, I mean, zero points. He, Tom Brady has not been shut out since 2006. Do the math. That's 15 years. And it took place in Tampa, took place in the primetime stage, adding injury to insult. Chris Godwin suffered a torn ACL. Mike Evans and Leonard Fournette were also sidelined during the game, hamstring issues. And it looks like Fournette's out for the season. It's just, uh, wow, you know, what What the football game. It was just ridiculous. Now, yes, they're 10-4, and four, but without Chris Godwin, and you remember the, the saying from their coach, uh, basically Bruce Arian saying, you know, if, if um, Antonio Brown screwed up, he'd be one and done. Well, not only did he screw up with, you know, false COVID information and trying to portray a card that he didn't have, but he's also been on the injured list. He's, you know, he's who he is. And you're thinking, well, he's going to be like, well, I meant sort of done unless I need him as a ride receiver. I have a feeling he's not done. And lastly, the other what the football, when Bruce Arians was a coach in Arizona, and he was the head coach out there. He took a break after the fact. He used to pick up former Steeler players. It was almost like a West Coast Steeler. What is he doing down in Tampa Bay? He's doing the same thing. 
He's got A, B. He's got, um, oh, I just forgot, a uh, cornerback. And it starts with a C. It'll come to me. He just picked up Le'Veon Bell. And so you're like, wait a minute. What does this look like? It's like a repeat performance of what he did when he was in Arizona. Ross Cockrell just found it. I knew it was going to, it was on the tip of my tongue. I just knew it. So he's got three former Steelers that, I mean, just recently former Steelers. And we'll see if Le'Veon Bell is in shape. But with Leonard Fournette out, I get that. This should be very, very interesting. I hear he already had his first practice. I actually picked him up in one of my fantasy leagues because of how much work they gave um, Fournette. So it'll be interesting to see what happens out there. But talk about a what the football in Tampa. I think it's a, just a wide open field. Nobody has it locked. Everybody was thinking that Arizona was going to walk in. Everybody was thinking that, you know, the Steelers are out. If you ever, everybody just does their job and do you, it is a wide open field. Who knows what could happen? But until next time, folks, this is Terry Fletcher signing out and I will talk to you week 16 on the WTF Steel City Underground podcast. Make it a great Christmas and thanks for listening. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.